Hi, I'm Natalie Rhodes, and this is Into Math's 5th Grade, Module 17, Lesson 6. I'm going to go ahead and go over the I can objective. It says I can divide a decimal by a decimal. The learning objective is to place the decimal point in decimal division. The prior learning is that students explain division by using equations, rectangular arrays, and area models, and students divided using strategies based on place value, the properties of operations, and the relationship between multiplication and division. All right, so moving into the lesson, we're on page 443. We have a step it out. It says, Marisol sets up a lemonade stand. At the end of the day, she has made $8.75. So how many cups of lemonade did Marcel sell? So we have to look really closely at that picture over to the right and see that her sign says that cups of lemonade are 25 cents. That's written pretty small right there. And she makes from each cup of lemonade, that's 25 cents, she makes a total of $8.75. So we need to figure out how many cups did she sell that day? So A says, what is the division problem that we're trying to solve? Remember, take your total, which was 875, and we want to divide it by how much the cup was worth, which was 25 cents. All right, now for B, it says, how could you write this problem as a fraction? Remember, fractions are division problems. So write the problem A exactly how you see it. Make the first number the numerator and the um, second number the denominator, and that division sign will just turn into a fraction bar. So instead of saying 8.75 divided by 0 0.25 as a fraction, we would say 8.75 over 0 0.25. So we would write it 8.75 over with the fraction, and I usually would put it top and bottom, but I just don't have enough space um, on this specific problem, so I'm just writing the fraction bar next to it. But it's still numerator and denominator. All right, for C, it says, what number could you multiply the numerator and denominator by to write an equivalent fraction? Remember, that means a fraction that is equal, it's the same value, with whole numbers. So what it's asking is what can I multiply the numerator and the denominator by to make both fractions whole numbers? So if you notice in the numerator, I have 8.75. So I have two numbers behind the decimal that I need to get rid of to make a whole number. And in the denominator, I have 0 0.25. Again, two numbers behind the decimal that I need to get rid of to make a whole number. So if I have two numbers that I need to move, I need to move that decimal over two times to get a whole number. If I move that decimal twice, so it would look like this over to the side, so I have 8.75, I need to go one, two, like that, so that the decimal is here, so that it's a whole number. If I'm able to move that decimal twice, that means I need to multiply it by 10, twice, because every time I move that decimal, it's like I'm multiplying by 10. So what's times 10 times 10? That would be multiplying by 100. So I can multiply by 100 for the top and the bottom to make both numbers whole numbers, because if I did the 0 0.25, again, two bounces, two movements would make it a whole number of just 25. All right, so what is that equivalent fraction? So that new equivalent fraction is 875 divided by 25, or if you're reading it as a fraction, equivalent fraction, you would say 875 over 25. All right, for D, write and solve the new division problem shown by the equivalent fraction. So what we're doing here is we are going to do 875 divided by 25, and we need to figure out what it is. So that 875 is your dividend. That means it's going inside of the division house. So I'm going to put my 875 here, and my 25 is my divisor, which means it goes on the outside of that division house. And then the number on top is our quotient. That's what it's going to be equal to. That's what our answer is going to be. So I have the divisor is 25. I'm going to think of quarters to try to help me. 
So I need to see how many times 25 goes into eight. 25 doesn't go into eight, so I'm gonna go ahead and put a zero up top. Does 25 go into 87? Yes, how many quarters would it take me to get close to 87 cents? Three quarters, right? If I had three quarters, I actually have 75 cents. Now I'm gonna go ahead and subtract, and those lines are already there for me. So seven minus five is two, eight minus seven is one, and then I'm gonna go ahead and bring down that five, so now I have 125. All right, now think of quarters to get to $1.25 or 125 cents, right? If I have 25 cents, 50, 75, a dollar, a dollar 25, that would be five quarters which means I'm gonna be multiplying by five and it does go in perfectly evenly. So five times five is 25, carry the two. Five times two is 10, with that carry two would be that 12. So then when you subtract, you would get zero. So my answer or my quotient in this problem is 35. All right, now for E, it says, how can you use this quotient to solve the original division problem? Well, remember, the answer is still 35. Because our fractions were equivalent and we multiplied by 100, the 8.75 divided by 0.25 is the exact same thing as 875 divided by 25. Because I changed both the numerator and the denominator, they're equivalent fractions. It would be the same thing as if I was saying, what's two divided by four? Okay, now what's one divided by two, right? It's the exact same things because two fourths and one half are the exact same thing. That's what we're doing here. We're just using much larger numbers. So it feels a little funny to say that the answer is the same, but it is because both numbers were changed by the same amount, which means that the numbers are equivalent, which means if you divide by one and you divide by the other, they're gonna have the same answer. So how can we say how can we use this quotient to solve the original problem? It's gonna be the same answer. All right, so how many cups of lemonade did Marcel sell? She sold 35 cups of lemonade. All right, let's go ahead and flip the page here. It's gonna be your turn to try to solve this problem. So we're on page 444 now. We have a step it out number two. So same type of work, just a different problem now. So James rides his bike 16.32 miles. He rides about 9.6 miles each hour. So how many hours does it take James to ride the distance? So we know that he's riding a total of 16.32 at 9.6 each hour, so we wanna know how many hours. So that's what we're looking for is how many hours. For A, what's the division problem that we're starting with? B, estimate your answer. So round up or round down your decimals to whole numbers and then divide and see where your answer is. For C, how can you write the division problem as a fraction? Remember, just take your first number as the numerator and your second number as your denominator and turn it into a fraction. For D, write an equivalent fraction, just like we did before, with a whole number denominator. So you're, it seems like you're not gonna get a whole number for the numerator, but just make sure that the denominator is a whole number, because that's what we're gonna be dividing by. And then what did you do? What did you multiply by? For E, go ahead and write and solve that new division problem and solve it over to the right. F, how do you know that the quotient of the new division problem is the same as the quotient for the original division problem? Remember, this is the exact same answer that we just did on the previous page. G, is your answer reasonable? Can you explain why and if your answer is reasonable based on what you did for your estimate? And then H, go ahead and give your final answer. How many hours does James ride? All right, go ahead and solve these problems and come back and we will definitely be solving these together. Go ahead and hit pause here. All right, let's go ahead and solve this. So for A, it says, what is the division expression? So I start with my 16.32 and I am gonna be dividing it by that 9.6. So that's my expression. Now I need to estimate my answer. So my 16.32 is closest to the whole number, 16. 
And then when I divide, my 9.6 is closest to 10 for the whole number. And I know that since it's a power of 10, 16 divided by 10, I'm just going to move the decimal plate decimal point from the end of 16 over to make the number smaller since I'm dividing by a power of 10. So my answer here would be 1.6. If you didn't get that on your own, that's totally fine. Um, as long as you are working through the problem, um, especially working through E and solving that division problem, then you should be just fine. All right, for C, it says, how can you write the division problem as a fraction? So I'm going to go ahead and write my original division problem, which was 16.32. And instead of the division sign, I'm going to write that fraction bar, and then I'm going to do my 9.6. All right, for D, it says write an equivalent fraction with a whole number denominator. So I want to make my denominator a whole number. And if you look, there's only one number behind the decimal, which means I just need to move it over one place value, which means I'm just multiplying by 10. So, but in order to make an equivalent fraction, I have to do the same for both. So I'm going to take my 16.32 and I'm going to move it over once. So the new decimal point is here. And then I'm going to take my 9.6 and I'm moving it over once so that it's here. So that it need, now it reads 96. So my new equivalent fraction, meaning it's valued at the exact same thing, is a 163, and now the decimal point is in between the 3 and the 2. Fraction bar, and then my denominator is now 96. How did I do this? I multiplied by 10. All right, so for E, now we want to write and solve the new division problem. So again, turning this back into a division problem would be 163.2 divided by 96. So remember that 163.2 goes inside the house, and the 96 goes on the outside of the house. And then we need to figure out what it's equal to. So 96, I'm just going to round in my head to say it's 100 to try to find roughly what the answer is going to be closest to. So 96 doesn't go into 1, it doesn't go into 16, but it does go into 163, and it just goes in one time, right? Just 100 goes into 163 one time. So 1 times 96 is 96. When I subtract, I'm going to get 67. And then I'm going to go ahead and bring down the 2. Now I'm looking for 96 into 672, or 100-ish if I was estimating into 700-ish. So my answer, I'm going to guess, is going to be 7. Now I need to actually multiply. So 7 times 6 is 42. If I carry that 4, 7 times 9 is 63, plus that 4 is going to be that 67 evenly for us. So we're going to be ending with a zero. Now, the most important part about the division with decimals is I need to bring that decimal point from here straight up in between my one and my seven so that my answer is going to be 1.7, not 17. All right, so for F, it says, how do you know that the quotient or the answer of the new division problem is the same as the quotient of the original division problem? That's the same as the previous answer. We know that they're the same because of the equivalent fractions. And I'm just going to shorthand to say equivalent fractions like that. All right, for G, is your answer reasonable? Yes, my answer of 1.7 is reasonable because it's close to my 1.6 estimate from B. All right, so how many hours does James ride? We found out that James rode 1.7 hours total. All right, great. Go ahead and finish up the rest of your problems of this lesson, and I'll see you back for lesson seven.